Welcome to the presentation on Karuda, the open source portfolio, five years and counting. Karuda is a true open source solution to support your ePortfolio needs. I'm Janice Smith from ePortfolio, and this presentation was co-authored by Jacques Renault from HEC Montréal and ePortfolio, and also by Shoji Kajita from Kyoto University, who's here in the front row. Thank you for being here, Shoji-san. We always like to include the abstract, but you can look at this, I believe, in the program. An overview. We're going to give you a little review of the project, talk about where we've come over five years, uh, emphasize the strength of Karuda, which is to support innovative community projects with a flexible tool. It's gone beyond being a portfolio to being a very creative learning tool to help you solve your learning needs. We'll give you a few highlights of our progress since 2014 in Miami, and then go into some use cases. Karuda was created to uh, echo what was done in the open source portfolio, OSP tools in Sakai. As you know, they, they had to go away because there were some coding problems. So Karuda has taken its place and moving forward. Our founding partners were HEC Montréal, Kyoto University, IUT2 Grenoble, Three Canoes LLC, and ePortfolio. We graduated from Aperio Incubation in 2015, and we now have an international governance board. Uh, at least one of our members, Eric Duknoy, is here today. I'm going to wave to the people. Yeah, thank you, Eric, for being here. So from uh, developing a tool with actors at the University of Montreal to uh, becoming an Aperio project in 2015, to having an international board in 2018 and receiving Ministry of Education funding from, the, from France in 2018, Karuda has come a long way, and we have a vibrant community, especially within France. Our international community now has one governance board consisting of members from Belgium, from France, from Canada, from Japan, and from the USA. We've presented at many different conferences and virtual uh, sessions. There's some of our, our PowerPoints, which you can find, many of which you can find on the Karuda Project website. Our strength, as I mentioned, is supporting innovative community projects with a flexible tool. It hardly, it, it's much more than a portfolio and a very flexible way to solve your issues. Right now, there are 36 Karuda instances in France and one in Belgium, or maybe two in Belgium, I can't quite read there. And some of the institutions involved are listed. Karuda is about the learning process. Originally, we constructed learning portfolios to focus on developing academic professional or professional knowledge, skills, and identity. We added to that reporting capabilities and evaluation capabilities to focus on programmatic or institutional improvement. And we added showcasing capabilities to focus on sharing attractive displays of evidence with others. These flexible ways of using Karuda are not at all the same across institutions, which is one of the emphases of this session, the different use cases that Karuda can be applied to. Karuda has the flexibility to organize different resources according to a workflow for different users. And it takes, it used use best, it follows an iterative, pro, iterative process. A designer who's learned some of the features of Karuda works to create templates for students and instructors to interact. A prototype is developed and piloted in order to further refine the process before going into instantiation and production. The source of this flexibility is a tree. For each element, you can define semantic tags, actions and roles, and how to display. You can organize, search, and choose. You can read, write, delete, submit, show, hide information, and you can use various features like CSS and free positioning to edit the content. 
Designers can do more than users, but users can be given the permissions of designers. So anyone can work with Karuta who wants to learn a few basic skills, not coding, but a few basic uh, customization skills. And in using those skills, you can upload files, create dashboards, create rubrics and apply them, assess others in the, or yourselves in the use of Karuta, send messages to evaluators, generate resumes in a PDF form, answer questions, fill in an online form, incorporate multimedia content, document, reflect, share, comment, export, and print. Our progress since Miami in Open Aperio. We have a new user interface, which I'll show you in a moment. We have new functionality, rubrics, dashboards, reports, a CV and a bubble map for sharing information about uh, individuals, and a way to access outside evaluators. We have a new community, as I'd mentioned, going strong in France and supervised by an international governing board. So what does our new user interface in the release of 2.4, which just happened in May, what does it do? It has a much improved control of colors and appearance. You see the old interface, which was rather boring, and the new one, which looks much more Web 2.0 or beyond. In our next release, 3.0, we'll be able to use blocks of content to offer new page possibilities and subsections using cards. And uh, 3.0 will be released, we believe, sometime within 2019. So that will allow images, col columns, control of various visual aspects. The, the portfolios will look like the best websites, and everything will be responsive design to be able to display it on a phone. But let's go back to 2.4, the most recent release. The new features include um, making assessment of learning simple with an instructor dashboard, um, where you can see here that the names of students are on the left, and the instructor can get an access to all that student's data in this one place, uh, and then a, the ability to post evaluations or comments for that student. So by centralizing evaluation and not making the instructor go to different portfolio pages, uh, the, the instructor is going to have a much less difficult time supplying evaluation. This, among other ideas, was supplied by one of our uh, participating institutions. We get some of our best ideas from our, from our community. Reports. Administrators can have better access to assessment data. This is very important in the USA and becoming more important in other countries. So large reports can now be executed on the server, which saves an enormous amount of time and makes them more accessible. Uh, and as I mentioned, this was another request by a current user. The rubrics have been clickable for a while, um, but, we'll, but with our new look and feel, this is the, the older look and feel, we'll be able to make them much more attractive. So let's talk about some use cases. Now, many of these use cases are available on our GitHub uh, uh, site. Uh, if you go there, you can find not only the code and uh, documentation on how to install Karuta and training materials for designers, but you can also uh, get some of our most recent templates to slot into your use of Karuta and further customize from there. So the AACNU, which is the American Association of Colleges and Universities, some years ago put out some value rubrics, which were created by faculty across the USA to uh, conceptualize what faculty thought students should be learning about several cr critical learning outcomes. The AAC and U value rubrics is a relatively simple template where students upload and reflect upon evidence of meeting, of meeting the standards in the rubrics, and evaluators can evaluate evidence and reflect using the clickable rubrics. So it, this one still has the old look and feel, and you can see here the, the, the value is defined. Students are uh, invited to show proof of learning 
evaluators are able to click the descriptor in the rubric that uh, they feel best matches the student's effort in, re in submitting the evidence. And then the, there, are, there can be reports to assemble the data. A career portfolio. Now, some of these were in the, in the USA, some in Canada, some in France, and some, in, some de developed to show for Japan. Um, this is a career portfolio that helps students build a winning resume. And students can request through the portfolio follow-up by a career professional and then use a tracking tool to report on the submissions of resumes. So here is a, one of the pages. The students are, are shown on the left-hand side the various categories to put information in. What you're seeing here is the profile page for my information. Uh, the, another learning, a learning portfolio at uh, the Haute, Haute Ecole in, in Liège in Belgium uses CARUDA to support learning through in a faculty management program. The students combine classroom activities with internships, and the portfolio includes a profile, a list of projects and tasks, and then most importantly, a self-assessment of skills. The evaluation questions are organized into blocks and many blocks. Here we have the newer look and feel. This is all in French, so it's not that easy for some of us to um, delve into, but this is the evaluation of one of the mini blocks. And uh, it includes the audio, auto evaluation and the evaluation by the supervisor. Another learning portfolio for business administration where seven modules created by seven different ins instructors inhabit the same portfolio. And students use each module to reflect on their learning prior to meeting with a coach. So there's, it's always important to add in, in um, motivation for students to actually do the work. Just setting a portfolio in front of a student and saying, go to it, rarely works. The faculty collaboration is all important. And here at the end of the process, the supervisor, or throughout the process, the supervisor can access a dashboard to follow the student progress. And here we see objectives for one of the uh, standards being mastered. And then um, the students' um, choices on evaluating their learning and the summary module. An assessment portfolio from a theological seminary in the USA uses the portfolio to collect evidence for institutional assessment. Students upload multimedia evidence of their mastery of specific learning outcomes. Instructors evaluate the evidence using clickable rubrics. Administrators run reports on assessment data. Students organize and share their learning in a showcase portfolio. Um, since this is a project that I worked on and um, learned some lessons by, I'll make some comments about what we learned by working with this institution. First, piloting is so important because when you're collecting data from a portfolio, the data persists. You don't throw away old data. You keep collecting data and the structure you use to, to hold that data can't deviate too much or you've got uh, non-comparable data. So after a year of using the portfolio, the faculty at this institution decided that they should have collected it differently. Well, Karuta can be reconstructed at any time, but what happens to the data? So that was one problem. Another problem was the assumption that students will do the work even if faculty don't particularly participate. In this case, the uh, faculty was not on board for doing the portfolio. They saw this as an institutional assessment project, which did not involve their, their well-being. So there was some question about how much data was assembled. Well, if the whole project is there to assemble institutional data, but the students aren't using it and the faculty aren't supporting it, you can imagine what the result is. Unfortunately, the the Portfolio projects represent a different way of looking at learning, and although the ideals are excellent, sometimes the follow-up is not. 
So if you're going to run a portfolio implementation, having a broader view of the things that you have to do for educational change is important. So the last goal, students organizing and sharing their learning in a showcase portfolio couldn't really happen if the students hadn't organized and assembled their learning. This project is ongoing. They have not forgiven, given, given up. They will be revising their structure and will give it another go because it, in the USA at least, in, uh, institutional assessment is not going away. So here's the welcome page at this institution. Uh, student submissions according to various outcomes and including documentation, how did I assemble this evidence and reflection, what does my evidence mean to me? And then uh, evaluator ratings according to the different components. And a student dashboard so the student can see in one view how they're doing on their different portfolio submissions. And then there was also a showcase. Another career portfolio. A career, oh, I spelled center wrong. Well, a career center helps student, high school students in, in, who have dropped out get, come back to school and find the right training and job for their needs. This portfolio helps them think about their dreams, their education, their experience, their leisure uh, activities, their strengths and qualities and values. And it's especially useful to this school because the budget is low and they need a flexible solution for this particular clientele. So this, this one is again in French, um, involving uh, collecting here uh, reflect, um, documentation and reflection and ref, uh, on education, on scholarly activities that they prefer and ones they don't prefer. And an evaluation portfolio at the University of Grenoble calls this portfolio a workshop on possibilities. Each student self-assesses his or her capabilities. A peer review takes place and a dashboard allows students to see their own assessment and that of their peers. So again, this one is in French and uh, all the um, possibilities are organized in a dashboard. And finally, a project which, is, uh, which I've never personally seen, but which is near and dear to my heart. It, was, it won the, the, one of the Atlas Awards last year at Open Aperio. And I do think that it represents the cutting edge of portfolio use in, in the world, really. Uh, there is a team of, uh, first of all, this takes place at a smaller institution in Grenoble, France. Uh, it has a three-year uh, undergraduate program and then a master's program. They primarily use the portfolio for 3,000 students in their undergraduate program. They have a limited number of uh, majors or careers at this school, so there's some uh, manageability involved in the smaller amount of, of academic content. They have a team of 40 dedicated portfolios who are faculty at the institution who devote some of their time to supporting portfolios. This is all important for making this project work. The portfolios are trained and they're uh, led by a, a master portfolio, another member of our project, Eric Giraudin. Um, they assist the students in developing their portfolios across three years of their degree. They do this by means of a, I think it's like a one credit course that happens every semester. Students provide evidence and self-evaluation of skills, but most importantly, and I became convinced of this over time, Eric said it was the most important part of the project. The students use the portfolio to select their most valued skills not the skills their parents told them to, to acquire or their teachers told them they were great at, but skills that they want to pursue for the rest of their lives or at least the immediate future. They then compare this, these most valued skills to those required by 200 possible careers, and the university has assembled skills that they believe uh, belong to 200 possible careers that degrees at IUT2 could support. <clears throat> the portfolio then pre-populates a shareable resume and something called a bubble map. The student can manipulate, edit the resume and the bubble map 
to show their accomplishments. The resume can be exported as a PDF and the bubble map can be shared online. The bubble map, uh, by clicking different bubbles of different sizes and colors, you can go deeper and deeper into evidence of the student's learning. So the idea is that there would be uh, different outcomes for the students and that the project would begin to solve a major issue in what, that I understand exists in France that the universities are producing many graduates, but the companies that want to employ graduates are not finding the skills that they need for particular careers. Hence the support of the Ministry of Education. So I'll review basic briefly from last year's presentation what happens in the IUT2 ePortfolio with Karuda. By the way, this portfolio has an interface that goes on top of Karuda and the interface is going to be integrated into a future version of Karuda through the Ministry of Education funding. Um, so once you've got a branch in open source, your big problem is how to reunite the branches. And we have a plan. So students take a look at their academic learning, their student activities, and their internships. In each, in each case, they self-evaluate, and they can or in some cases should ask for validation by an instructor or peer or supervisor. They then categorize their skills. Um, these skills are, can be categorized as career specific, cross cutting, or personal abilities. Uh, and in the process they identify their most valued professional skills and compare these skills to a specific career from a skills map of 200 careers prepared by their university. Um, th this allows them to create a basic CV using the portfolio, emphasizing the skills they want to pursue in their future and pre-populating it with uh, descriptions of the skills and experiences along with some language proficiency ratings that relate to the European CERCEL uh, certification process. This, can be, this resume can be exported in PDF or MS Word. And I mentioned the bubble map with clickable bubbles revealing uh, other bubbles displaying most valued skills, special achievements, significant experiences. And this can be distributed via LinkedIn or by a link through email. Now, this, this project in France has some pretty high aspirations. And that what they want to do is use some newly acquired open source software called Free Roam, which is a, a kind of an AI, if I understand this right, and it's still under development that will interact with the repositories of skills that are being made across the French nation, made available across the French nation, um, to help students uh, think about the interface between their skills and the possible careers. This is something that uh, career specialists can and should do, but if the portfolio can also do it, it's a, uh, like one more step in helping them understand where, especially where there might be local opportunities for employment and how they can find further educational opportunities to bolster their career, to career specific skills for careers they would actually like to pursue. So for more information about Karuta, you can learn about us at our project website. Uh, or by going through the Aperio website. You can download us at, at GitHub along with a whole bunch of other things including templates and installation documentation and um, training for designers. Uh, feel free to contact us through our Aperio e email or individually to Jacques or myself. You can follow us on Karuda on, um, on Google Plus or, or Twitter and you can try us in a, port, in a portfolio sandbox by going to, you can go to the Karuta website and look for resources and that will bring you to ePortfolium. That, that sandbox allows you to assume the different roles of users, so students and instructors and evaluators and try out a template for yourselves. It also can, by going through this process, you can be encouraged to download Karuta and try it out yourself by um, uh, customizing your own simple portfolio. 
We're always available for questions. Um, at some point, questions turn into a service contract. It's always a tricky thing in the open source. How much does one help for free, and how much, how much does one have to survive as an organization in order to continue to help for free and to continue to, to develop the code? So that's what I have to say today. And um, I welcome any questions, or if any members of the project or folks from France want to speak up, I welcome that as well. Any questions from the audience? Any comments? Okay, well, if, uh, tonight at the showcase, I will be at a table, and I can show you uh, some of these use cases if you like. Um, I can also discuss any intentions you might have to try out Karuda or to become possibly a member of what we do together. Thanks very much for coming today. Much appreciated. <laughs>